Hi, my name is Phil Bagg and we're going to explore placeholder variables in this video. You can find more essential knowledge videos at codeit.co.uk forward slash video. You're looking at a semantic wave, which is great for thinking about curriculum sequencing. The idea is to take a complex idea, such as a placeholder variable, and unpack the concepts until we get to the most concrete examples and simplest meanings. Starting at the red arrow, you can see us doing that on the downward curve from left to right. What does placeholder mean? Variables are like whiteboards. How they're not like whiteboards. At the bottom, we have pupils acting out concrete examples. Then the curve to the right is where we repack meaning to get back to the fuller meaning of, of the idea. Concept in code. User input. Initialization. In the rest of the video, we're going to unpick this even more. A variable is a named unit of data that holds a value of a specific type, namely a number or a string. A string is a value that contains anything, text, number, punctuation, etc., that is not treated as a number. For our earliest forays into variables, it's easier to just talk about text or numbers. Uh, and that's a, a reasonable accepted simplification for primary pupils. A placeholder is something that reserves a place for something, or someone. <coughs> Zero is a placeholder in maths. It marks that there is nothing in the, I don't know, units, tens, hundreds, hundredths, columns. <coughs> Many labels act as a placeholder. A visitor's or guest parking space is a great example of that. Sushi Grover in her research identified that pupils who had spent time looking at the concept away from code in a story context first had a deeper understanding of the concept when it was used in code later. What is the name of the variable? Well, it's visitor in this case, isn't it? We can see that on Monday the value of visitor is nothing, no car is parked on the visitor spot on Tuesday its value is red car, and for the rest of the week its value is yellow car. The value of examining everyday examples of a concept is directly linked to their cognitive load. Prior thoughts about a concept significantly lower its cognitive load. Few primary pupils will have thought about placeholders prior to our use of the term. For this reason, everyday placeholder examples can be excluded if you wish. The most useful variable analogy is that of a whiteboard. You can write data onto a whiteboard. It could be any type of data, number or text. You can remove this data by rubbing it out. We can do the same thing with our digital variables, deleting the value of the variable. We can write a new message onto a whiteboard and we can assign new data to a variable as well. Whiteboards are useful but not perfect. If we use them, we must also explain the limitations of the analogy. We don't have to name our whiteboards, but we do have to name every variable or the digital device won't be able to identify it as a variable. We call the data assigned to a variable the value. I have never heard anyone talking about the value of their whiteboard, outside of a computing lesson that is. This linking of name and value is called assigning. Assigning is a great term. It works for all types of variables and it does not bring about misconceptions. Examining variables in simple algorithmic form is a great way to play with the concept and discover some of its properties. Here pupils are assigning a value to a variable called fave name. Now the pupil is asked to read the name but act on the value. So if Sophie was assigned to fave name earlier, then this will read as Sophie loves to dance like a kitten. In my class Sophie loves to shout out I love my teacher. I would love to change my name to Sophie. <clears throat> Writing simple algorithmic examples help to ensure that more pupils will have some understanding of a placeholder variable concept before we actually get on to code. An important programming principle is to assign values to variables before you start to use them. Scratch allows you to ignore this principle, but it's good practice to get into this habit anyway. Name and value are crucial parts of any program variable. Just like our silly algorithmic example earlier, if Scratch reads the variable name, it acts on the value, in this case displaying the text. So it reads username but displays Bob, because Bob's the value. 
using an input block we can get the user to assign their own value to a variable. In this case they are typing their own name which will be assigned to username. Testing pupils understanding of what we shared is important as well. The program reads the variable name but acts on the value, in this case Lana. Let's recap. Variables store data, variables have a name and a value, variables assign a value before using a variable, read the name, act on the value, you can get the user to assign a value to a variable, placeholder variables hold a place for each value to go such as a person's name, date of birth or age or anything you can think of. Variables can be assigned numbers, text or both, well strings really. We name variables without spaces so usernames become user underscore name or user name with a, a large capital N for the second name. Variables are a complex concept but careful unpacking and repacking will ensure that more pupils will use them in useful and mindful ways. Do get in touch if you have any questions. In highest Hampshire inspectors provide resources on every area of the curriculum that you can find on our Moodle. You're welcome to subscribe if you're in or outside of Hampshire. Thank you.